him back. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to more of the Kiev Dota 2 Major group stage action here. It's a Swiss format well underway in the third heat as we have Virtus Pro versus Team Random. I'm Dakota Beyond the Summit casting this live from our Los Angeles offices, and I'm going to be joined remotely from my good buddy, the Croatian comrade, Lacoste himself. Lacox is back together, baby. Yeah, it is. Uh, look at those uh, pretty much insta picks. So, do you think Team Random will pick five completely different heroes again? I hope so. I hope that's the mentality they go for. Uh, it definitely was a refreshing mix up, and I would. I don't know. It depends how they look back. I mean, if you. It depends on the, the perspective that Team Random looked back at that last game, and if it's like, hey, if we never got that smoke play. We probably would have lost. Are we really satisfied with the draft we built for ourselves in that previous game? And were we able to execute it the way we wanted? So I'm curious if uh, that will influence things here for game number three or not. Yeah, uh, VP banned the uh, Monkey King uh, because they don't have the first pick. Uh, so yeah, they don't want to play against it. And three and Protector, that hero is pretty much banned all the time from what I saw. I saw him only eg playing it and they lost the game didn't have much time to get all the games that's the only sad part about uh watching the Ten big tournament because you i'm the type of guy that likes to watch games live but the internet is dark and full of spoilers so that's true that's true i've been seeing a lot of things i try my best that's the thing that's hard because uh with this kind of setup which most people agree the swiss setup uh, makes things as fair as possible, or at least what most people feel as fair as possible for seeding into the playoffs. And especially when you're going to be seeding into a single elimination playoff, you really want to have a very fair group stage on seeding these teams. And Swiss is one of the best ways on doing that. It does mean, though, that there's going to be like four lines of games happening all at once. So, you know, we got cast happening kind of all over the globe right now. Radiant Dota hitting everybody all at the same time. So there's like, you know, you give and you take. You're not going to be seeing all of the teams play against all of the other teams, but you also want fairness. So there's never the best kind of format. But uh, from what I've been seeing already, though, Ten it's been remaining. some upsets. Because i got to say, Lacoste, a Swiss format means that every game Five really does matter remaining. a bit more. And we've seen EG already drop a series 2-0. Uh, OG, you know, DAC champions, multi-major champions just dropped their series. 0-2 against IG, and I know they dropped one of the games against SG in their first round. So yeah, it's it's interesting. It's already an interesting group stage. I I love the format. I mean, I didn't hear about the Swiss format. I don't. Know, I heard about it like two months ago. Then we started discussing about it, and uh, the way I see it right now, I I'm liking it more and more. Oh, I said OG uh, DAC champs, and I was totally wrong. It was IG. I think I was just thinking ahead of myself. OG major champions, OG DAC runner runner ups, and they had a nice rematch and lost again. Remaining. So got to be a little concerning there for OG, but uh, IG and Chinese Dota still looking He's very strong. Time. Team Random looking strong in the last game, so we'll see where they take it from here. Only a couple of bands have come out. First Pro acknowledging Team Random and what have, what has become like kind of one of their comfort picks. I don't know if you could ever say Team Random have a comfort pick, but. Omni Knight is something that continues to resurface for them, and then Team Random Radiant get rid of the Life Stealer. Yeah, Medusa banned. Uh, they played Medusa in the second game against uh, IG, Vitality, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. uh, and they won that game. I'm surprised that uh, Invoker is still not picked. I mean, usually teams uh, pick either Invoker early or save it for the last pick, because usually the Last pick hero is for mid. Yeah, I mean, I guess it could depend. If you're if you're the liquids of the world, of course you're going to go for the Invoker right away because you have Miracle on your team. And I guess any chance he gets, he would love to play Invoker. But for other teams, yeah, they definitely find different value in the Invoker grab. I know that no one plays a really good Invoker. So, but... It's obvious that Virtus Pro are just coming through this group stage happy to flex all of their muscles and what they've came prepared. They were not around. They were on the sidelines watching during DAC, 
And here they just suddenly pull out Ten a completely different remaining. lineup once again and incorporate the Wisp now as their third pick. That's a lot of heal combined together with Warlock, Io, Tether, Bottle, press the attack. Who do you think they're going to inject all of this ridiculous love into? <laughs> Can't be a lone druid. That's not a thing anymore. I mean, I, I would doubt it. So I'm, I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad the hero is Sven? out. Actually, Sven maybe again. Ramsey, Sven. I don't know. You know, it's got to be the Ramsey's hero. Uh, you know, they pull back the tiny again. What? What's? We don't see too much wisp anymore. You know, occasionally, time to time, like EG would pull it out, but. Yes, it's kind of a secret hero thing. Yeah. But, yeah, as you mentioned, it might be a Swen, uh, maybe even a Jug. Silencer. That's three different heroes so far, so go Team Random. Yeah, Team Random, just uh, making sure they never keep anything consecutive in one series. That's just their motto, apparently. But uh, here they get the Silencer, who, you know, obviously will enforce kind of Virtus Pro to be more reactionary with a lot of their team fights or, you know, just always have to have that global in consideration here. Reserve time. Yeah, they, they can't play that aggressively with uh, IO. I mean, with relocate IO plus one hero because of the global silence. If they TP, they can just use global and go back. Or if they initiate through the mid game with the Legion commander, like Blink Duel, there's going to be a... Global silence following that up. I'm actually... Sur <laughs> I don't see if it's going to be a mid silencer. It might be. It might be a, like a Crystal Maiden Sanking duo. It might be a farming silencer, which we don't see very often. It, it can be a Sanking on offline. Yeah, that, that's the jug Radiant right there. Even more heal with uh, Healing Ward. Team Jeez, back. Team Random just immediately knew they were going Spectre. Either reading the draft appropriately to, to expect something like the Jug to come out or knowing that they were going to go to the Spectre from the get-go, whatever the case may be. Not hesitating at all. Go right they, in for it. So. Ten seconds. They got a good setup uh, with a Sanking uh, Spectre. It's kind of a global, global kind of strat. Yeah, Reserve Global time. Silence Spectre. What else can we add on top of this here? Possible... Sun a sun strike from Invoker. Oh yeah. I, that that might be actually a good pickup for them. They need a mid hero. I mean, Silencer can be played as a mid hero still. Zeus, uh, you know, just get Zeus. Yeah. yeah. Radiant team ban. I've seen some Zeus uh, through DAC qualifiers. I think a few games. It we worked well. Bit. We saw a little bit of Zeus. Nothing for me to go Zeus is back, but a little bit. Just it could have been experimentation. Could have been love for the hero, but I was not a believer. I mean, it's not going to be Zeus because they have, like, heroes with no escape Reserve mechanism, time. Crystal Maiden, Silencer, Zeus. Yeah. Uh, it's just so stop talking about Zeus. We're done with Zeus. Yeah. It was a bad idea. My fault. We're not talking about go Zeus Go back anymore. to Olympus. I will. I will. He will. Uh, Virtus Pro here, final ban. Puck, back to random side now. Look at Virtus Pro's lineup here, and uh, the piece missing. I don't know. I could see them throw drug towards the mid lane if the uh, situation seems right. But uh, outside of that, I don't suspect no one to play the jug, so they're going to get him something. I imagine a bit different. Oh. DK was banned in the previous game. Any room for that to squeeze into their lineup? Radiant they might. They, they, I think he's going to be a mid-hero still. Uh, Virtus Pro also thinks because they banned Puck. So it might be in Joker or... Hmm. They don't have the last pick, so... Ten seconds remaining. Maybe even an OD is not a bad idea. Five Good against Legion remaining. Commander. can And... Uh, Works well with Global Silence as well. They need some more damage output and some control. But I would go, oh. Hmm. Tinker. Team, team Random Tinker. We yeah, it's five different heroes, as we mentioned, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. He's kind of global once he gets uh, the Boots of Travel. So you have a lot of global fight potential now. Tinker and Spectre can kind of show up at a moment's notice. So uh, Sand King can kind of be one to set things up. Hell, even Crystal Maiden gets a little bit of that global support loving. 
Oh my, is that going to be a mid Skywrath Mage? That is filthy. That is filthy. If they're going to do that against Tinker... Yeah, he spams him a lot, but uh, Skywrath Mage has zero armor. I mean, the hero is uh, good, don't get me wrong, uh, especially if he gets items. Uh, Aghanim Scepter on him was reworked, so oh, yeah. whenever he casts the spell... It's crazy. There's, uh, yeah. It's crazy, man. I played it in, in Overthrow. Have you seen much of it? It's nuts. Just suddenly nah. double ultis, double silences, double arcane bolts all over the place. I don't know if we'll get there to that point or not, but that is... What is feeling like a, a pretty damn aggressive grab? I mean... Where does the Wisp go in this mess? You know, is he going to be joining the Skywrath ma Mage in the mid lane? Like, feeding him ridiculous amounts of mana. You got yeah, Shrine exactly. nearby. Shrine yeah. with Wisp action. Like, this feels filthy. And I yeah, like it. Well, Warlock and the uh, Jug is strong lane. They can uh, even have a kill potential with Fatal Bonds and Spin. And uh, they can survive whatever comes to them. So I can just focus on jungle, just stacking for Legion Commander if needed, and just uh, buff a Skyrot Mage with uh, mana. This will be an interesting one. Who do you got? Got to call out for the predictions here based on the lineup before us with Team uh, Random I'll... and Late Game Spectre and Tinker and Virtus Pro, Jug, now Skyrath Mage. A bit more high tempo. What do you think? Uh, I'll go for Team Random because they have... Uh, like pretty much of everything, uh, sanking stun, they got good initiation, specter, thinker, a lot of magical damage, they got good uh, anti-initiation in the global silence, and the only thing Virtus Pro got is like blink initiation on Legion Commander, and that's it. The other heroes, uh, Warlock, Io, Skyrat Mage, no escape mechanism. So I'll think these three heroes will go down not so easily. There's a lot of heal on on their side, but uh, I'll go with uh, Team Random. Sounds they don't good. have anything. Yeah, yeah, they don't have anything uh, to catch Tinker with. I mean, they don't have anything that provides vision during the mid game. Maybe Shadow Blade on uh, on Legion Commander, but uh, that's it. Once he gets uh, Blink Dagger on Tinker, it's gonna be hard to catch. All right, we're getting ready to get set into what is game number three of the third heat, day number one of the Kiev Major. Let's say we'll be starting with a bit of a pause as we get underway, though. Does it look like uh, we don't have anything too fishy? It is going to be no one on the Skywrath Mage. Just wanted to get super clarification on that. This is going to be a bit, a bit fun. Predictions? We don't care about those, do we? The prediction nah. thing? Yeah, I'm close. Yeah, we now. just said it. I mean, like, yeah, we're prediction a game, but, you know, do you get that little prediction tab? Did you even buy a battle pass or whatever? No? No. Yeah, you don't need that. You're too cool for battle passes. I'm, I'm, I'm Can't old school. It? Yeah, I'm <laughs> looking for donations. Okay, fair buy enough. Buy me a companion. Buy me battle pass. I'm not going to buy just... you anything. You're going to get nothing. You can cast for it if you want. Here, uh, we'll see the setup come out. I'm curious if preparations are different at all, knowing that from Team Random's perspective, you are going to be heading into this kind of powerhouse mid lane matchup at all. I don't know if you get an early wand or anything like that. It doesn't look like his buildup has changed. Does Crystal Maiden come by? Like, Do you do any preparations if you're Team Random, or is this something you just kind of have to go for, or just take on the chin, rather? Well, they need to help him at one point. Uh, Maiden has a wind lay, so she wants to be... Mobile wants to move, trying to help him out. I mean, Tinker's gonna have to use Shrine really early. Uh, oh, look at those uh, wards on the high ground. Skyrat Mage wants Filthy. to have one. Yeah, but, I mean, both heroes benefit a lot from that uh, high ground ward. Alright. Oh, okay. I also didn't notice Lil is going jungling wisp kind of a build up here no straight to bottle build up for him he's got an early iron talent so yeah but it's it's good as i mentioned uh, he doesn't need to help anyone that early because top lane is enough to handle a solo sanking not not uh, really a big uh, off laner he can upset get some xp he has Burman's shield but other than that, he's not that strong. I mean, he's going to get harassed a lot by uh, by Warlock. 
We will uh, keep tabs on him to see how fast he can accelerate his farm and then suddenly could appear into one of these lanes for Virtus Pro like a wild man and suddenly give him a huge laning advantage here. Bottom lane, touching base. Ice, Ice gets plenty of free shots in with those little bits of pure damage trying to force Pasha to try to chew through some of his tangos early on. Over on the other side, it is Faith Beyond on his Sand King here in a matchup against the arcane-wielding Ramsey's Juggernaut. So only being zoned out uh, temporarily by Solo in the meantime. Yeah, on the bottom lane, Pasha went for uh, press the attack to remove the Frostbite from Crystal Maiden, which is pretty smart. I mean, Silencer can't really out-harass. Silencer plus Spectre, it's not really a strong lane, so I expect Legion to, be, to get some... Serious XP on the bottom lane. I mean, he's playing good in a jungle. Oh, has a TP if they try to go on him. TP to Shrine, go back to the lane. I mean, th these are the few moves that he has in his mind. Watching Lil still do a bit of his ball play here, if you will, in the jungle. Farming his way through this camp. Nearby, a tussle for the two-minute bounty rune. Faith Beyond is going to commit his stun just to secure it for himself. And we'll get some few extra shots here onto Solo, who's just trying to pull the camp nearby for his lane. Fish that out. Lil is about to hit his level 3. He's getting so close. Uh, and uh, we'll see the back end of Faith Beyond just TPing out from trouble. Well, not TPing out, stunning out from trouble there as Ramses does rotate over. So some flirting here from both sides, but no early harassment coming out. It's a bit of a slower-paced matchup as, we've, you know, as opposed to our last two games, which were a bit more spicy. Yeah. Well, Io doesn't want to go heal. Still, they want to use Shrine. And they want to gather to him and the uh, Sky. Uh, they're going to use it right now. And the benefit, of course, of linking up with no one so he can get the double regen. Man, look at all that. He's full. Yeah, he's full and good. Lil pop out some balls here. Tries to go for a stack. Will he get it on the one camp? He, yes, he should. Goes for the Ancient Camp, will not get that one though. Nonetheless, still get some nice solo levels here. Ooh, going for Shadow, and they'll get it done. No one's able to pop off plenty of Arcane Bolt damage. Oh! Not quite enough heals though to come out from Lil with the tether there. Bottle shows up yeah. now, but you know, damage had yeah, been done. He, yeah, he got a return kill, but uh, that's it. Did you see Solo? I mean, he went there with the upheaval from Fog, like Max close distance combined with uh, concussive shot. Just so slow. So freaking slow. Makes for another setup. And they're not stopping yet. They already come back to the lane. They get another kill. I feel like this is only going to be the beginning. Now that Lil has that bottle and a couple of levels, we could see them just kind of continue to do this. Well, we mentioned that Tinker will need uh, a support on the lane, but uh, Crystal Maiden was kind of late. Tinker died twice, so she just needs to focus there and they maybe even need to move the silencer. But uh, Legion Commander having a really good time on the bottom. Used Shrine before. Let's see if they can get a kill. Okay. Die. It's going to die. They're going to get it done. Blink gets the follow up there, chasing in through the back end of his dagger. Legion Commander will go down. Double rune action here for Wise. He grabs up the haste and the bounty. Plops a very deep ward and Takes his business elsewhere. All right, two to two. So we get back into the action. Double takedowns yep. on the shadow as he's both of those kills, though. There was no intelligence stolen, but uh, they got a good kill. Now, uh, Spectre's going to have a hard time against that Legion commander who, who's almost level five and just spamming overwhelming gods. So. Radiance top For a while there, it looked like Isis was going to be able to kind of zone off the lane, you know, being a silencer and all. But you do like to have a little bit of everything, so he went for the 1 1 1 buildup. And, uh, you know, as you said, with Legion Commander being already at that level 5, able to kind of avoid any sort of extra trouble. Top lane, Ramsey's full Blade Fury damage and two quick swipes of the sword, and he's going to get the takedown onto SK. Now has to pop the healing ward here. Rotations are considered here from the Crystal Maiden, but uh, that is not a jug you want to be fighting into. He has a Mango and an ulti still in his pocket. Yeah, he's good to go level 6 right now. See, SK just TP'd back. Doesn't have any 
levels in Sandstorm. If they know that, they can uh, try to go on him with the Mango, Omni Slash, and Blade Fury. That would be uh, a good opening opportunity, but it does look like they are not going to get that chance here. Crystal Main comes back nearby. Crystal Main, a lot of work cut out for her in this one, trying to give some extra support already to Tinker in that mid lane, and now has to kind of continue to pay visit to Faith Beyond nearby, because the approach of that Tier 1 is coming here from Virtus Pro. But uh, now it looks like a little bit of free space here for the Spectre. Legion Commander has stepped off to the jungle to finish out what looks like getting to level 6 and getting that duel online. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. And Lil's Sanking back in the jungle. So. Sanking, just standing in upheaval. This is feeling really good for Virtus Pro, but I feel like I've said that before in the previous game here, so it's just looking like three games straight where Virtus Pro have a very good laning phase. Uh, let's see about the CS, though. No one at 33. Oh, he's trying to get the finish for his ult, and they still will get it, but it looks like he will lose his own life for it. A committed oh, from Blink with the ulti. That was on edge of uh, Sentry Ward, so they got him. Barely. Look at the Sentry Ward on the side of the Radiant. That's right. Shrine popped. Oh, yeah, right here, I see. But they will Shrine and heal up, and he gets to head back to lane there. All right, nice little counterplay there, but Shadow will continue to be prolonged from completing out what looks like his Soul Ring, and then, of course, you got to get those Boots to travel, so Radiant this is all is under really just kind of paying dividends right now. Virtus Pro, though, yeah, duels up, and uh, this Legion Commander continues to flirt around. I mean, imagine the combo of a duel plus a Mystic Flare. Mm. Radiant structures are fortified. Mm. Mm, that's juicy. It is juicy. Can they defend top tower with Omni Slash? They can't. I don't think so. Upheaval's there. Can they get the catch on anyone? Uh, they're thinking about it here. Ramsey's running forward here. How much cojones does this man have? Thinking about Blade Fury back within the trees, but uh, Team Random, no, they cannot move any further forward. Oh, commits it with the Omni Slash. It will get a follow-up kill. Fortunate RNG there for Ice Ice because, you know, who knows? That Jug could have just taken the extra slashes all the way forward, but he bounces back. Yeah, that was kind of ballsy. And, uh, well, you have Wisp behind you. Uh, Wisp just hit level 6, 8 minute, uh, has um, enough gold for Urn of Shadows, Bottle, Iron Talon, Raindrop, I mean, he's pretty rich. Uh, I mean, Warlock is buying everything, so... Yeah, Warlock is the one who doesn't get to be level 6 yet, but as you see, he does have his Tome up in queue, and that should help get him closer to having that rock available. And at that point, we could see some serious teamfight destruction here from Virtus Pro. But while this Warlock is trying to get the funding for the Tome and trying to get the XP for level 6, he gets jumped. Rotations are going to be coming out. Looking to walk on is going to be Pasha. He gets the dual Mystic Flare combo. And that keeps Solo alive. He continues to dish out the upheaval. And this gets a beautiful turnaround for Virtus Pro. They had, like, those TPs in their pockets ready to go just for an opportunity what? like that. Yeah, one TP, good, they even got the dual damage, Mystic Flare, dual combo, pretty old school, good relocate, there's nothing they can do about it. Random just trying to kind of make their own approach, does make those little breaths of space for people like your Shadow Tinker, and of course for Blink, here at the bottom on the Spectre, who continues to progress a bit. Second in net worth, just nip it at the heels of your jug. But uh, I don't know if this is Dreams of a Radiance kind of a game. It looks like they will be moving into a Yasha at least next. Yeah. Well, he can always switch if they get a good team fight and he sees that he's close to Relic. He can always switch. He, that's why he's not buying anything right oh, yeah. now. But... Uh, he doesn't want to commit to Radiance right now uh, because Tinker is kind of poor. He's like 1.7k gold away from Boots of Travel and they, he wants to have something to fight with. That's just why he's saving it. Could be seeing uh, a bit of saving here for both sides. I already mentioned the Boots of Travel that Shadow will continue to attempt to save up for. Uh, but we have Blink Daggers from both sides here probably getting up in queue in a moment. Pasha, I imagine, to be one. And then, of course, uh, the Sand King here, Faith Beyond. Working between pulling a camp is got one up in his queue. 
feeling like uh, any extra initiation here because we were talking about in the draft the setup that he can bring as long as he can find a good opportunity to make an approach on Divertis Pro or any sort of single target you have the Haunt and as well as Tinker with hopefully Booza Travel to be able to get in on the action but the problem is that Verse Pro are just doing so damn good in their laning phase that they're already taking it to these tier ones and just really bullying Team Random at this point. Yeah, they have so much sustain with the Wisp Tether, uh, Warlock Heal, uh, Healing Ward. Now, Don't Veil of Discord is finished on Skyrat Mage, so that's going to be a lot in the next fight. Warlock is six. Okay, oh. he just casually walks up and lands a double Chaotic Offering. This will quickly force out the Global Silence right now. And uh, now it's Team Random trying to fight the hell off from this. Virtus Pro can't quite get close enough for any sort of grab and pick. It looks like Team Random have been able to create up a decent amount of space, and they're going to be able to get the finish themselves, taking out Lil's Wisp. The Tier 1 is also going to stay alive and eventually will get denied by Shadow here. i got to say, a pretty good fight for Random. They hold things off. They do end up taking a couple of losses in the tower, but uh, they take a pick of themselves. And that could have been a lot worse. I mean, what what was that? Solo's just like, all right, I think it's time to fight. Walks up and drops a rock. Uh, they were they were far away. At least they could get the concussive shot just to extra slow, and they could have gotten at least one kill and then commit to a tower. But, I mean, Team Random, you, you haven't heard about Team Random. I don't know how strong they are, but I know how strong Team Wings is. So. Yeah. Yeah, you can definitely see that these guys uh, have that Wings influence playstyle. <laughs> they remind me of Wings. They remind me a lot of this Wings team I've seen before. They're very resilient and very random. But here they kind of fend themselves off from what could have been a little bit of trouble, and we get into another awkward growth spurt uh, here for Virtus Pro. It's more of accumulating those Tier 1 kind of their first Tier 1 kind of item, or at least first playmaking kind of item here. Pasha's got his whole bottom half of the map to kind of work with the farm there. Yeah. Uh, both Sanking and uh, Legion Commander is going to hit the di Blink Dagger timing at the same time. Dyer's middle tower is under and Shadow also looking to go for the Boots of Travel. He's kind of farming his way through the jungle. This is just super important for Team Random here. They know that they are way beh behind in the quota they were hoping to reach and getting some of these items online, so... Handing over Death is only going to make things more difficult. Oh, look at this. Solo trying to go a bit into enemy territory here to get a ward down. And look, Ramsey's almost able to help him out a bit with that healing ward, but doesn't want to commit anything further than that. Will cost him his own life, but Solo does get dropped. That's just the risk you take sometimes, man. When you're a support and you're trying to get some good wards down, sometimes you got to go deep into the unknown, you know? Well, you got to die for your team. You got to die for your team. Classic. When you die, just uh, uh -oh. spam. You, you, you just spam. Oh, They found Lil. And that ball of ice somehow manages to tether himself out and take him and Jug back to base. And he will live. Wonderful play from Lil, though. Avoids some trouble and is able to tank that gank, not die, and fend off Team Random. This will allow Verse Pro to out, set up a reaction play here. Uh, Silencer, look at this build on Silencer. I mean, we saw Poppy playing Silencer, like more of a carry transition Silencer through the mid and late game with Helm of the Dominator. I mean, Helm of the Dominator was uh, nerfed a lot. No one even buy, buys that item because it's garbage. Yeah. Uh, but I love the Silencer build. This is the build I've been trying in pubs. Uh, I've been testing Silencer for so long, and uh, this this one is particularly really, really strong, especially combined with a Sanking Thinker. Ooh. Maiden. Whoa! Could not quite find the target there. Faith Beyond couldn't quite get the stun. Lil shows up at the drop of a hat when necessary. The global's going to be forced out. Why? Dishes out the freezing field. Solo is going to be able to wait out the silence and then drop the rock. He goes for the upheaval, will get hit with the stun, but the chase is on from VP. Pasha can't quite find his first target. Looking to go for the duel. Man, Team Random are so scrappy at avoiding extra trouble. They will eventually find the Crystal Maiden, but just one little pick right now. Upasha wants more. Spots out Faith Beyond, looking to go on the chase. Faith Beyond heads inside the pit, tries to juke back out and back in, but then just gets himself juked into a duel. And damage Good will play. be awarded. 707 victories for Pasha. 
so far. Not bad. Uh, that was a good global. They didn't have enough damage to take Warlock down, and uh, he canceled the fight with a rock. Uh, Woo! -hoo! See you later. Ice Ice gets deleted out of the game. A jump in play from Ramses with the Omni Slash just does the quick work. They need to take down Hero really fast, Team Random. They want to win a fight like Barrow Strike into Tinker, Rocket, Laser. But uh, there's so much sustain from Virtus Pro, all those heals. And Visp is getting really big. He's building uh, towards what it seems to be a hood. So they, they, he just wants to negate the magic damage. Yeah, you have people like uh, Ice Ice even building into a Veil of Discord. Will allow that hood to come back into play pretty nicely. Ooh, ooh. We got a duel over here. Mystic Flare relocate play coming in. Virtus Pro flexing their team coordination muscle here in their matchup against Random in Game 3. Random come here to react, but it's just like, what happened? What, what happened? Spectre died in our woods. Oh, no. Someone put in a report. <laughs> who, who did they report? I Maiden? Know. Why didn't well, you buy wards? Get a, 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 I guess a police report because they just came and murdered someone. It was a total homicide act and Virtus Pro left without any evidence here. So, Yeah, th there's no evidence. There's no dual victory damage as well. So, But more work here. Going to be set out for Team Random, and uh, you know I felt pretty confident when the, when they had their storm game going for them. Shadows got his boots to travel now. That's step one. But uh, Tinker, as we know, is a pretty much like a three-four step process before he can really be a team participator here. Blink is next, which helps kind of make things a bit easier for him to jump out and jump in. But uh, I don't know. After that, is this like kind of your? Dagon laser tinker kind of a game or is a sheep stick perma lockdown kind of a game. It's really interesting when you look at the verse pro lineup, what the hell you're going to need. Well, it's probably going to be uh, Ether Lance into Aghanim Scepter build from my point of view. They need to, he just needs to be as far as possible from enemy team and just deal so much damage and that's it. Like, not get caught by Legion Commander and that's it. Yeah, the laser could be a trouble for a lot of them. Nice. Certainly the Legion Commander and the Jug, but uh, jumping in confidently, looking to go for the dual snatch. Can't quite get it. Ice Ice using the trees a bit. Finally, they get the grab, and that is a kill. Rock is also there. Maybe a bit of an overhand, but Faith steps in with the between him and Blink. They try to go for a surround play, and Y just gets oh. obliterated from the Omni Slash here, and Epi on the back end side is not going to find its way into the fight. This one is Virtus Pros as they take down two and look to go for the tier two. Yeah, tier two is gonna go down. They committed Spectre Ulti, Sanking Ulti didn't hit anyone. CM Ulti, she just died from Omni Slash in one second. She tried to find a nice little clever spot by sneaking in into the low ground by those trees, but the second the freezing field came out, like Ramsey saw her and was like, ooh, our click. Just took her out. Ooh, relocate top lane, blink. Back into action after being previously picked off, now silenced up, gone for. I mean, they say that a lot of the Chinese teams do have a harder time going against Wisp lineups. Maybe they don't have a lot of experience playing it themselves or playing against it, but, uh, you know, stuff like that. You just feel like you're confident in being able to split push a lane, but there's a Wisp in the game, man. It's going to relocate in. There's so much global pressure here by Virtus Pro. Yeah, there's global pressure on the other side as well. Yep. He needs to get that Manta style so he can remove sil silence, use uh, Spectral Dagger, and just run into the woods. But it's going to be hard, especially right now, because uh, Skyrat Mage has Road of Athos completed. And he's going to go for Aghanim Scepter. Pretty logical. Wow. That, that, that's going to be big. I just want to see... Him, like casting two ultimates on the target, two different targets. It's like instant too. It's, uh, it's yeah, not like cast one then cast two. Like it's just like if some support on Team Random is not paying attention, they're just going to be suddenly sitting in a Mystic Flare they weren't expecting, <laughs> then they just die. So, and then even the silence I think is just also something that will be just super catastrophic to the Team Random fight lineup. A straying. Tinker walks himself into an ancient seal silence that wasn't even intended for him. Oh, it just could ruin everything. So, 
he Shall needs fight. to stand stand back. Like they have heroes who who can stand back. Crystal Maiden, Silencer, Thinker. Everyone stands back. Who's gonna be in front? Like they need to have Fat Spectre and good, initi good initiation by a Sand King. Definitely need to be utilizing their mobility as much as possible. The really only one to jump into the fight here from Vers Pro is kind of Pasha on the Legion Commander blinking in. I mean, yeah, they have relocate, but uh, as far as just kind of making direct setups and fights that you should be expecting, uh, Pasha is really their go-to. But Shadow is trying to find those side lanes here to work with. Dyer's He's got boots to travel and blink, which attack. makes him feel a bit more secure about Dyer's doing this. Any sort of pre-measures they can do to stall things out, but Virtus Pro are Dyer's swelling up once again, forward. as we've seen in the previous two games. But it was only the last game where we saw Random able to kind of make the big turnaround play. Yeah, it's going to be hard for Virtus Pro to hit uh, buildings. They don't have any building heroes. There's Juggernaut uh, and Legion Commander, but that's pretty much it. They have a lot of heal, a lot of sustain. They can stand in front of the base, uh, but they don't deal much damage in... Uh, like uh, 10 seconds, 15 seconds for Battle Fury, Manta style, uh, press the attack. I don't think it's enough, especially against the Tinker. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to, for their sieging process. As you mentioned, they do have great sustain between Lil can staying on the outside and catching off good tethers and relocate plays with the benefit and extra heal coming out from the healing ward. That's super nice. Plus, of course, Warlock with a Shadow Word, but... Uh, it will be interesting to see what exactly Vers Pro feel like they personally need to be able to kind of push high ground here now. Yeah, last time they pushed the high ground, it was kind of a throw and a good play. Oh, Pasha got the kill of Shadow with a good relocate. Whoa. Relocate set up on the Tinker, trying to split push, and again, the Wisp comes in and just quickly trounces him. He wasn't even that far out in the lane. So nowhere is going to be begin to feel safe. Uh, for Team Random. I mean, even now Blink is just kind of running back. Can't even go up towards this close down the mid lane. Big lackluster in the vision. They have, a, you know, a ward over here and one pretty deep into Verse Pro territory. But once Verse Pro are right outside the gates of the Team Random base, you know, they're not sure what's happening. Verse Pro take this opportunity, though, to move into the Roche Pit and they will dip the Aegis here to try to close out game number three. Yeah, it's again, safe play from Virtus Pro. Take Roche, give uh, Aegis to Juggernaut, push top tier to Tower. Do they have a relocate? 20 seconds. Legion just uh, getting uh, some easy damage, 44 damage so far, with uh, Armlet finished. Alright, ooh, Rod! Ancient uh, Seal is there with the Mystic Flare. Not quite enough, but with the Arcane Bolt, will do it. And just like that, they quickly wipe out two. The follow play from Ramses with that Omni Slash, as we saw, was able to just obliterate the Crystal Maiden once again. She's eaten way too many of those and needs to go on a diet. Now it's going to be Virtus Pro ascending into that high ground. I was curious to see what they're going to need to do it. Well, what they needed was two kills. Yeah, Tinker, he has a buyback. Um... I'm pretty sure he needs to commit to it, otherwise they're gonna lose uh, the Raxis. Solo pump faking a bit with the rock. Jump in from Faith Beyond with just a casual stun, but no further commitment. Buyback will be forced from the Tinker, and that looks to be what Virtus Pro had wanted. But look at this, a oh, smoke, smoke Duel is ready. Hey, yo, jumps right back in, goes for the duel, and with the Mystic Flare, should be plenty of damage. The Global Silence does come out, but plenty of spells have already been casted before it. Now with the Sand King taken out of the equation and that epicenter, they have 40 potential seconds to work around it. Well, at least Tinker is alive right now, so he can spam. He can spam. I wonder, should they just go back? Uh, top lane's pushed pretty far, so it's a bit difficult to go over and cut in for the Tier 2. These racks just look so tasty. They would love to go for that instead. Oh, they drop a sentry, and it looks like they have spotted this little, little Crystal Maiden there, and were able to take her out. Shadow, this is his buyback, able to barely make it out from trouble. All the meanwhile, Ramses, with his eyes on the prize, able to quickly decimate the racks. Racks going to be taken out. Virtus Pro feeling super good. 
back on away. And we take a scary peek at the net worth overall, and it is all Virtus Pro on this one. They have had the net worth lead since the get-go, and it is currently about to hit 15K. 15,000 net worth on that juggernaut who's getting so big. They, want, they still have Aegis, and uh, there's a tier 2 tower. They can kill uh, shrines right now. I mean, look at the items uh, on uh, Team Random side. There's not not a, any big items Ooh. coming out. What's happening over here? I'm hearing an epi, but I'm not seeing an epi in a fight. So, unfortunate for Faith Beyond. Maybe not able to blink in. No, that was just epi, epi running away. Like, you don't come close to me. I'm using epi. Uh, defensive epi? Oh, that's the, yeah. worst, the worst kind of epi, fortunately. Well... Random kind of going out one of their adventures again. Got them great success in game two. So you can't really blame them for giving it another go here in game three. That may have been one attempt. And we'll look for I them just, to do more. I just heard Borat saying, great success. Great success. I can't do Borat. I'm not a Borat impression guy. I'll be honest with you, I oh, haven't even seen a yeah. Borat movie. What was the last one? I don't know. I thought, does he have two? There's Bruno, Bruno, Borat, and uh, one more. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I guess maybe that humor is not for me. Alrighty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Kind of, kind of disappointed in this, but uh, is Borat, your friend. I'm sorry. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'll watch it for you. All right, enough of Borat. First pro take that tier two finally, after pushing in that top lane and uh, have now moved their way over for the local shrine, a.k.a. more money. Yeah, Skyrat Mage finished Aghanim Scepter, so it's going to be all fun right now. I want to see multiple Mystic Flares here. This is exciting. This is an exciting time for us. They still have that Chaotic Offering. Oh, nine seconds they do. Nine seconds they do. He'll lead things in with the Epi. Blink, stunned back from Faith Beyond. Now has to go into the Sandstorm. Ramses begins his spin to win here. Blade Fury, right-click damage onto this Tier 3. The March Machines continues to come out from Team Random, trying to slow them down. But this Tier Buff 3 jug, baby. may not be set for this world. Move in another stun. Still faking with the Rock. Meanwhile, the Mystic Flare does go out. It just takes out the Silencer. So that global is not going to be needed. 26 seconds without a buyback. Now the rock going to be committed with a fatal bonds. Why is this going to be desperate to try to make it back inside the base? Now the epi return fire comes out from Team Random. What a quick heal. We'll barely keep Solo alive there. And they'll get the Faith Beyond takedown. This is looking like a Virtus Pro game, if I've ever seen one. Yeah, As definitely. Randy's They're open just up uh, the taking the racks. As, uh, Aegis is gone, but they don't deal enough damage. And Virtus Pro get to walk out with everybody alive and well. Solo, who had been eating the brunt of the damage here, even to this point, will get saved out. That was close. The team has so much sustain, and they are just showing, putting on a show with it here. Oh, that uh, Skyrat Mage is dealing so much damage, combined with. Uh, Upheaval, he uses uh, two concussive shots and uh, two mystic flares. People are not moving and it deals so much damage. I mean, that's in theory, we didn't see it, but uh, even one uh, one mystic flare is enough to kill kill a person, so you don't need to like go, yeah, all YouTube stuff. <laughs> well, that's what it's all about. Now we see Verse Pro. Able to step back and get these lanes pushed forward again. Tinker could just try to push out some of these side lanes as best as possible between him and Spectre, but there's always the fear of the relocating Wisp and company, so it's, it's tough, man. There's very few outs here for Team Random. They have great ways to spam out these waves with the help of Tinker and, and you know, Caustic and stuff, but feels like it's just delaying the inevitable at this point. But... I feel like I've said this before in the previous game, so I'm just going to try to my best to keep my mouth shut and wait until Virtus Pro claim at least one more set of racks. <laughs> Here they move uh, in. At least, at least at one, least set. one oh. more. Okay, that could happen pretty soon. Silencer's going to be taken care of once again. There will be no global for you, sir. 
Ramses will get the finish on this tier three as soon as this glyph expires. Blink is trying to poke at him a bit. There they commit in. The heels come out from Lil. And Ramses is feeling pretty good. Oh, hard damage. Faith Beyond is going to get taken out. And now the jumping Omni Slash shared between oh, Y and nice. Blink. Blink can't even make it back inside the fountain. This one is over. It's Virtus Pro walking away from the series with the win 2-1 against former TI Champion Squad Team Random, a.k.a. Wings. Virtus Pro looking so strong, so disciplined uh, this game. I mean, first game it was pretty one-sided game. In the second game as well, it was one-sided until they decided to kind of throw the game. But uh, I, I like how new Virtus Pro plays. Uh, I mean, they didn't have any good results in the past like six months but i feel they were kind of unlucky especially in the previous major where, where they got kicked out because of the format i think this uh, benefit this swiss format benefits them more is this just juggernaut keeps yelling at me in the game Hold on, what is he saying like disconnect it's ah and juggernaut i want to hear it one more time before i close out hold on <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyways, closing that. Unbelievable showing here. Virtus Pro knowing that they... There's a little pressure on Virtus Pro because this is home court, man. This is Kiev, and they have a lot of eyes, a lot of family, and probably a lot of friends that are going to be tuning in to their run of this major. And here they are in the top seed of this Swiss bracket right now, as of right now. So their next matchup is going to be super hype. And that's the cool thing about uh, this format is that as the days go on, especially for the upper bracket matches, they're going to get more and more hype as you see kind of the best teams currently go against each other. So <laughs> that wraps things up. Lacoste, we're going to cut to a little break, but we're not going to be gone very long because we need to be heading into our next heat. I'm not even sure if we're the last game or not, but our next heat on this channel is going to be Team Liquid going against SG Esports. Should be a good time. Are you hyped about that? Yeah, I mentioned to you before because we didn't know